Hello, Market Club members everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Tuesday, the 17th of July. You know, like an addict, the market needs another fix, and the drug pusher of choice is, of course, Ben Bernanke and his QE pills. I mean, the Congress can't do anything. There's gridlock there before the elections. So the question on everyone traders' minds these days is, well, the market's going to receive another QE3 fix soon. Or are the markets just going to get the shakes and move back to the downside? A QE3 pill is needed if the markets are going to get high again and on the upside. It's very debatable as to whether the Fed and Bernanke have any more pills left to sell. If Bernanke is out of pills, then this market will have to go cold turkey. And what that means is the market will have to survive on its own and the weakness and strengths and not on some induced quantitative easing. So let's go look at the charts and see what's going on in the marketplace right now. So here we are, we're looking at the S&P 500, which was down earlier in the day. It's come back and rallied back and to the plus side. Now what's interesting in this particular market, I'll show you what we're looking at, uh, so to give you an idea, and that is a couple of things. If you just look cyclically on this market, you have a high here and you have a high here, and if you count these days, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days. So it's 11 days between highs. And if you count from this high, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So tomorrow, it'll be 11 days. So this possibly could be, today or tomorrow, could be a possible high in this market. And I still think this market's rolling over to the downside. I think we're going to see this market roll over. A key thing to look at in my opinion, is going to be a trend line. And I'm going to clear everything off the screen and show you what that trend line is because I think it's going to be a pretty important one. So let's go to a very simple line chart. And we put our trend line in. And this is what we're going to draw. We start from this point here and just draw it right up there. You see it's pretty much in great shape, hitting those points. And so we come in right around the 1340 area. Now, if we see this market... I think if we see this market uh, come under pressure and we sort of turn around and come down below this level, we would consider this a, to be a breakout to the downside and a resumption of the downward trend, which, by the way, is still negative. The reason we're seeing this sort of choppy action here is because the weekly chart is basically, the weekly triangle is basically up and the monthly is down, giving you that trending range and a sort of score around the 70 level. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market. So generally speaking, the equity markets are still in the doldrums. They really haven't gone anywhere. And I think that tomorrow, today or tomorrow, could be a very important cyclic high period for the S&P 500. So let's go to our next market and see what that is. And the next market we're looking at is crude oil, of course. Now, crude oil is towards the upper end of its Dantian trade channel. And if we put a candlestick chart on, which we'd like to look at, of course, you can see we actually tipped out of it just like we did on July 5th. And I would not be surprised to see this market come back down. We are in a 60 mode, meaning it's a trading range. So we're at the top of the trading range and we are overbought. So these two factors, if you look at them, if you look at the fact that one, we're overbought, two, we're at the top of the Dantian trade channel, and three, we have a monthly trade triangle, which is the dominant trend is still down. So I think we'll probably reverse from this area, but you want to see a little more evidence. But certainly the 89 level is very strong resistance right around these levels right here. So let's see how that plays out for the rest of the day and next week. So let's go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at, of course, is the... Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones is the same pattern as the S&P. We talked about the monthly down, weekly up. And you can see where we still, I still think we're going to be rolling over. And I could be wrong, but the reality is here's the high, here's the high, and the high is coming in somewhere like this. So you're getting this type of movement. And, of course, this lends itself to a top, should it go through the 12,500 level, which I think is a key level for the Dow so let's clear the screen and keep moving on. There's lots to cover today. I want to cover the, some of the bank stocks we talked about yesterday, which I didn't do too well yesterday. So here's the euro. Uh, so the big move in the euro yesterday was sort of given back today. It actually was a lot lower earlier today, but it looks as like it's just it's flattening out a bit. Just simply, you can look at the last several days here, and we're sort of like that. So we need something else to kick the can 
uh, so to speak. But I still think we're going to see this market probably roll over eventually. Maybe we'll see a little more rally, maybe to 124, maybe 123, 124. But I think eventually we'll see this market whose main trend and the weekly intermediate term trend are all down. So I think we're going to see this market go lower. So not much to say that's positive about the euro. And unlike a lot of markets where they say it's very overboard, very oversold, these markets can stay in trends for a long, long time. So let's see what's uh, happening with the other markets. And we'll look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ is quite simply a little bit, actually a little more negative than the Dow and the S&P 500. And what I mean by that is, let me just put a very simple close only chart. And let's take some of these chart online chart studies off right here. So here's a, here's a simple as you can get a line chart. And you simply take a, a, a trend line from the lows right here, scope this up, and you can see it touches perfectly the three points we like to see. It also touches the recovery here. And so this market looks like it's turning, rolling over to the downside already. So let's see how that plays out. But out of, and of course, this market's very heavily weighted in terms of techs. So I think this is a, an area that we see in the market high, high, high here. Boom, we start coming down. You get the monthly down, the weekly is up, of course, and that gives you that 50, the trading range. We are getting into an overbought condition. So beware of this market on the upside. It really is not, not something I'd like to follow on the upside. So let's clear this chart off and go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is gold. And we talked about this yesterday. You just have this big, big old kind of sideways market going on. Really just not much going on at all. You can see the key areas in gold that we're looking at. And I'll just write them on the screen, 1570 and then also 1566. They're the two areas to watch on the downside. So. 1570 comes right here. We take out this low close here, and the other low close was 1566. So they're the two things to look at, in my opinion. So let's see how that plays out. But generally speaking, the 1600 level is really hard for this market to get through right now. So, and if we just put go back and we'll put a uh, simple candlestick chart, you can see where we've been so far today. And we were a lot lower down to 1570, which is obviously a very key level. Rallied from that level. Now we've sort of in the midpoint, but we are lower on the day in this market, probably about just a little bit, about a third of a cent, percent lower. So let's go to our next market. <clears throat> and what we're looking at is copper. Copper basically is really is still in this broad trading range. It looks like it's making the base still too early to tell, but you still have this mixed monthly down, weekly up. So basically short term, very short term is up. The intermediate term trend is also up. The longer term trend is down. It gives you the 70, which is really not a tr trending market at all. It's just sort of like a sideways market, which is exactly what the market's doing right now. So going to silver, silver has been a really a, a mystery, I should say, for what Whatever you want to call it but basically the key levels there and silver that we're looking at which i think are definitely very important are these levels right here we're looking at 2680 and 2670 they're the two levels and basically if we see the market go below those levels we'll be in a lot more downside pressure certainly a close below this level which is about there, is going to be a real negative in my mind because that'll be a new low close. And if the closes, we even see the closes right about there. So that will be a new low close for the move. I would not be surprised to see that because the market does not act with any conviction, either on the upside or the downside. Plus, we're a little bit overboard there. So be careful with that one. And looking at our next market, this is the CRB Jeffries Index. Uh, this market is... It was earlier like it created a dark cloud cover, but it did rally when most of the other markets rallied. But um, watch this market where it closes today, because if we close, I would say if we close below 93, 293, it could be a, a negative engulfing line, which would be, signify a top. We are overboard, of course, but um, let's see how this plays out. But generally speaking, if you put on one thing we like to do, and I'll show you how we do this, just put on our Donchin trade channel, just use a standard 20 day. And our parabolic, and you can see we're right at the top of this 
dungeon tree channels usually when we at that point like we were here you come back into the channel i would not be surprised to see this market come back in the channel plus you're at a about a 61 percent fibonacci retracement level there too so looking at our next <coughs> market is jp morgan jp morgan's down on the day has actually come back from its lower levels but a key level here is 34 on the downside if we go below 34 on JP Morgan actually 3394 to be exactly correct this is where the PSAR is right there uh, it's going to basically show some some more downside pressure I think again you've got this sort of looks like it's rolling over uh, to the downside but hey the other question we want to look if you are not familiar with a one-on-one -on -one personal market club coaching give us a call it's a free consultation the phone Call is free, 877-219-1482. Give us a call and see how it, it can help you improve your trading. So let's go back to our charts and our next market. A little commercial there for our company. I hope you don't mind. But uh, let's take a look at this market. And this is the Citigroup. And you can see Citigroup is actually down from the opening today, but actually up on the day. So here again, the key there on Citigroup is going to be a close. Monday's low, which was 2662 if we close below that level, which is 26.62, I think we'll put in a top and we'll see this market challenge these lows again around the 25 level. Would not be surprised to see that. You can see that we're back up into this area just like we were here and the market came down. So let's see how that plays out. But I'm generally not bullish on the bank stocks simply because you've got a monthly and a weekly down and a minus 85, indicating the trend is clearly down in this particular market. So let's go to our next market and that's Bank of America, again, a struggling bank. You can see that's sort of moving around. It just uh, let me put my illustrator on here. But you can see we've got this, these highs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine days from high to high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten here. So it's not so different here. Uh, you could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could say you could say this is a nine or a ten, but certainly you're at a ten now. So this could be well be a high period, and we are obviously overbought. So let's see how this market closes for the week. It's going to be very interesting to see where we close because we had a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of enthusiasm last Friday in these markets, and they really haven't followed through dramatically to the upside. I think people are just really confused but generally speaking we're going to go with our trade triangles both of which are negative right now so let's go to our next market clear the screen and the next market we're going to be looking at is going to be wells fargo now this is probably the best bank out of everyone uh, we do have a mixed bag it's a trading range but generally speaking it's a you know it is in an uptrend uh, at least intermediate term trend longer term it's still negative lots of resistance around the 3450 3460 area it's like a brick wall there for this market so i'd be very surprised to see it go through particularly if the other banks start to get a little bit soft so let's see what we have left we have pro shares the sds FAS, and you can see pretty much the on the fd uh, the sds uh we talked about this these lows and you can just do the reverse here which is quite easy to do and that is you just count, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this, we'll call this 10 or 11 days. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So possibly tomorrow is a low day here. And that may represent a very low risk buy simply because our monthly right here is up and the weekly is down. I think that's a, probably a very low risk buy in this particular market so let's see how things play out tomorrow and today uh, it's still early uh, Ben Bernanke's on the hill tomorrow testifying not sure what all they're going to say but if something comes out of his mouth it could be quite interesting to say the least so give us a call personal one-on-one -on -one market club coaching see if it's right for you end up the year on the plus column with a one-on-one -on -one market club coaching yes it really is true it's a one-on-one -on -one market club coaching course for you to take. See if it's right for you. Give us a call. It's a free consultation and a free call. 877-219-1482. I'm Adam Hewison. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great trading day.